So I thought I'd try this out as a video format. This is not going to be your standard honed video where I've actually edited it. I'm just going to be going through a problem that was sent to me and hopefully it'll be useful, but it's not going to be very well edited if edited at all, just to save a bit of time. So the idea of this I was sent is someone is making a mold and they need to have it having a lip round the outside. So you want an indent of this model in a solid block with a mold line or basically seam line around the outside. And you can see this has sort of worked, but they're having a problem with basically creating it and it having lots of issues in it. You can see some of those issues here. So I'm gonna go through how I'll do this. I'm not saying it's the best method, but we'll try and solve some of these problems. So I'm just gonna start by bringing a cube. I'm not gonna talk through every single thing I'm doing because it will get really tedious. I'm also gonna get rid of all of those because I hate those. But you've got in the bottom right hand corner what keys I'm using. So let's just scale this up to somewhere about the right size and then let's S and set that down. Okay, and then G and move it to the side. I said I'm not gonna do the keys and then I get used to doing the keys. So who knows what I'm gonna do. Anyway, let's deal with some problems. Firstly, I'm going to delete all of these and let's have a look at this object. So the first problem we've got is that it's got a really curved bottom edge to it. We wanna get rid of that. So I'm gonna bring in a cube, scale it up to make it really big and then let's just roughly position it over the item and then G and then Z that down. And importantly, we'll need to make sure that it's not gonna lose anything. For example, some of these indents go f quite far in. So if I was to have that here, it would cause a problem. So let's go down to about there and just check that it's cutting off all of that sort of curving bit. Okay, that looks about all right. <clears throat> So I'm just gonna boolean that out and then we'll apply that using Smart Apply. Obviously you can apply that over there and then let's just G and Z or Y that over to the right position and then we're gonna go into face mode. And what this is gonna allow me to do is just extrude this out, which is gonna create a better shape around the outside. And hopefully that's gonna help with the boolean sort of out of this cube. So let's just, oh, and then 180 to flip that round, somewhere to about there. Obviously, if you want it deeper, then you could do it more or less deep. Let's go to about there. And then let's just put that in approximately the center. So I'm around there. Right, that should be good to go. Now at this point, what I wanna do is just keep all of these faces around the outside. We're gonna use this to make our lip. So let's duplicate that with Shift and D, Escape, and then P, and then by selection, and this will be the outer edge. So I'm just gonna call that outside. We'll hide that for now, and then click, click, Control minus, and we'll Boolean that out. That's H, and we've got our imprint. So that should already be a little bit cleaner than what was had. We've got this sort of edging here. Now, what we need to do now is make the lip. Let's just delete that, we don't need that anymore. So I'm gonna bring back my outside section. Now, there's loads of ways of going about this. What I'm gonna do is Shift and S. This is using machine tools. So if you don't have machine tools, you're gonna to need to fill around with that. And then let's go to the geometry, so it should be sort of roughly centered. I'm gonna move that down a bit to whatever height I want it to be. Let's say about there. Not sure how high this needs to be, but we'll go with that for now. And then we're gonna start editing this. Now this won't get a perfect shape, but it will deal with a lot of other problems. So what I'm gonna do is go into vertex mode, and then I'm just going to A and then X, and then we're going to do a limited dissolve five degrees. Basically, have a look at what level of detail you want. We can sort of make this more or make this less. It depends how perfect you want to be with this. I wanna go about 2.5, that should do. And then we can just solidify this out. So object mode, and either come into modifier, add modifier and solidify, there we go. And then we can change the thickness to whatever we want it to be going that way. Let's go somewhere around there. I don't know how much this needs to be, but 
you can make this up as you go or whatever you want. But the main bit that's going to be helpful with this is I can deal with lots and lots of cleanup problems. So we'll start having a look at how to do that. So let's just QQ and Smart Apply. And then we're going to go into vertex mode. And the first thing we're going to do is get rid of all of these bottom vertices. Let's just isolate this. So every vertex at the bottom. Why is the transparency not coming on? Anyway, so let's delete those vertices. And then we'll come back into our normal view. And you can see this has helped basically make this easier to clean up. Now, what we're going to do is use a combination of machine tools and mesh machine. You can do a lot of this manually, but mesh machine really speeds things up. So I'm just going to click there, press control and go all the way to here. And then if I press Y and then un FCK, you can see we can sort of move this out. I'm just going to press M though, and it just merges it all to that point that would work out. So it's a really, really good time saver. So all we'll do is we'll just have a look round anywhere where there seems to be some problems. Now I've got this so I can see them in yellow. Uh, I do that with edit preferences and then viewport, no themes and then 3D viewport. And then what I've got down here is, where do I keep that? There you go, face orientation back and front. So I've got my face orientation back set to be this yellow color and the front in theory should be blue, but I've got the alpha turned all the way down so you can't actually see it, but it means you can just see those yellow bits. Now this doesn't make it still that easy to see everything. So what I'm gonna do is just go into vertex mode, but anyway, there's a problem, I'm just gonna use machine tool, shift and one, and that'll merge in the center. Now I could do a merge by distance here. Let's have a look at that. Maybe up that slightly could solve a lot of those problems. So let's do that first. And then we'll just scroll around, having a look for our problems. Just remember where you started. So I'm gonna start on the tail so I know where I've got to. So just have a look for any issues. Shift and one, bring those together. I only really use the machine tools, or the, sorry, the mesh machine trick for anything that seems to be a really big problem on a corner. Let's have a look. There might be an overlap here, but I think we got that with the merge by distance. So just gonna do a visual check just cause I think it helps and then we'll do an automated check as well. Right, so this is gonna be a big issue. So let's go into edge mode. Will this be able to catch it? Yes, it will. So Y on FCK and then that's sort of sorted. There's still got a few here, so we'll just Select those, select there, shift on one. No, let's just do one, which is merge at last. We'll do the same thing with that one. And that should have that sorted. So just so you know for this, if I select these, shift on one is merged to center. And then if we select to there, just one is merge at last. In this instance, it doesn't really make too much of a difference, but up there, we definitely want to merge at last. Let's just scroll around, get in there. So this is a problem, let's just select those, shift and one. This, this can actually be quite a big problem. Let's just go there, control click there. Maybe this will actually deal with it fine. Let's click. No, so it hasn't dealt with it perfectly. So we're just gonna have to help it out by going there. No, just one, and then that should have sorted everything. There we go. Similar issues here. Let's shift and one to center. Let's select those and just one to have it go to the last. And you can see this isn't particularly hard. It's just a little time consuming and you get used to seeing what's likely to be a problem place. I'll probably still have missed some. We'll check at the end. That looks okay. There we go. I think we're getting to the top fin, so it shouldn't be too much to go. And there we 
go. Right, so we're just going to do a check on this because there's a chance that we've missed some. So I'm just going to go to 3D print. If you don't have this, edit preferences. Go to add-ons, type in 3D, and then you've got to have the dash, otherwise it won't come up. Make sure that's checked, and then on your side you should have this. Let's go to analyze and then check all. And apparently we've still got some non-manifold edges, but actually that's just the outside edge here. So that's not a problem. That means we should have everything sorted. If we didn't, we could try this make manifold button, but normally what I'll do is go into an edge. Let's actually make an edge that's problematic. So let's just go into top view and then do that. Okay, so if I check all again, hopefully this will show up, but it's not always perfect. And go to vertex mode, non manifold edges. No, so sometimes this won't catch everything. It probably would if I then extruded this out, but this is normally a good check. So what I'm going to do is go into face mode A, let's come out of isolation mode, and then what we'll do is just E and extrude this down to somewhere there. And it's got all the faces the wrong way around. So I'm just going to A, Alt and N, and then flip. And then we should have everything working. Now, this has put these really, really close because effectively they were overlapping. Now, that means that anything we do with the Boolean has more of a chance of going wrong. So we'll have a look at how this works. But click, Shift, click, Control, and Plus to do this Boolean. We've got the other Boolean operating on this at the same time, so this probably isn't the best plan. Let's actually undo that. Let's apply this Boolean so we've got that done, which is the dolphin out of it, and then we can try the same again, Control and Plus. And then, ooh, it doesn't like that. If we put it to fast, it might work, but it's gonna cause its own issues. Let's go back a bit. And let's do a 3D print check on this. Check all. No problems with that. We do have one non-flat face. If I go into vertex mode and click that, where is this non-flat face? And then I can just full stop. Um, oh, that's just there and there. So this is a problem with the original thing. There's actually a few of these. Mm, okay, let's just A, M, merge by distance. And we're gonna bring that really down. That probably is okay. Let's have a look at that. And then just check all. And I've created more problems than it's solved. So it's always worth rechecking after you've done something. Mm, that should be okay. Non-flat faces normally aren't too much of a problem. And then let's just check this. And we've got some intersecting faces. So this is why it's not working. We missed a couple. And as I said, the check didn't work, but now it does work. So let's isolate this again, go into vertex mode, and we can click intersecting faces. We can see where these are, so they highlight them. And they're pretty much all here. So let's go into vertex mode, and it's just these, I think. So let's just shift on one, and then we need to do the same at the bottom. Check that again. Now I've only got five. Where are you? I often go into X ray mode to easy, make it easier to spot. There we go. We've got some here. Let's do that again. There we go. That should hopefully have fixed all of those errors. So as I said, it didn't work when it was just one plane, but as we extruded it out, turning it into what should be a solid object, this made it easier to do. Control and plus, and hopefully that won't have as many issues. Let's turn up from fast to exact, because that's gonna cause more issues. And it will slow down a bit, but there we go. So we can now H this. You can see we've got a slight lip on some of these points. I don't know if that's a problem, if it is, what I'd do is just grab those vertices and just drag them out a little bit, and that would solve that issue. But we've got that. Didn't take too long to do. What's our recording time? There we go, 15 minutes. So it's actually pretty easy cleanup. It's just knowing little tricks that are going to help with it.